The paths to success or failure differ in that success requires slight course corrections and perseverance. My friends, just a little planning each and every day, 10 to 15 minutes. That is all we ask so you can master these charts. As I say over and over and over again, because it is true, and I don't know how many people are listening and how, how many folks are taking it to heart. If you will just spend the time, don't worry about how long it takes. Why? Because you'll make up for every minute you ever spent when you master the charts. Let's jump into the charts today. By the way, Patreon members, as soon as we finish this show, we will be recording and putting up for you over at the Patreon page, Charting Cryptos, Commodities, and Currencies. It goes out earlier to our Patreon members and everybody else on Friday. So let's jump into these charts. Everything is up except 20-year U.S. government bonds. They are pretty much flat, technically down 0.02%. So let's look first at the S&P 500. Now the high last week was 572.88. This week, 571.36, so we're not reaching the higher high. Lots of volume last week. We saw where it started building starting on, I guess that week is about the same in the week beginning the 26th of August and the 3rd of September after the holiday, the Labor Day holiday. Then we saw a little bit more week before last. Last week, nice, strong volume. This week, uh, we're at Tuesday going into Wednesday. I mean, we could hit the average by the end of the week, depending on what happens. But again, it just seems like this market is, is low and slow. And of course, we're coming out of the, the summertime trading zone, heading into the fall winter trading zone. You know, we've had a rate cut. Uh, where are things going to go with the election and what is going to happen after? We'll continue to keep an eye on these charts. Like we said, S&P up for the day, 0.29%. Not hitting a higher high yet. We can see where things had popped up on Thursday of last week, then dropped on Friday and are trying to build back up. You can see that on the half day chart. So that is Friday, Monday and Tuesday. So we will keep an eye on things as they're trying to build back up and see where indeed they head. Now the Q's, the NASDAQ 100 up a little more, 0.48%. And I must not have saved this yesterday because I moved this down here to see. I wanted to put this right on the top. See if we can get it on the top of that wick. Why is that not? There we go. There, uh, there it is. Yes. Okay. So I'm just curious. Are we going to penetrate that and move above? We're just hanging right there. Up. I mean, you can, you can see where we hammered right up on it there at the end of the day, indecision in the morning, and then things moving up, and we're sitting, the candle itself is sitting right there on it. Let's see where things go. I mean, again, we had, as we look at volume, uh, you can see on this latest two-day candle, I'm trying to get rid of that thing so we can actually see the volume better. Average volume, this is for Monday, Tuesday, we can see where things were up in the morning, volume backing off some in the afternoon with that, again, green spinning top in the morning. Uh, again, not a lot of volume here so far, two days in. Volume was below average last week, so we'll see where this market is heading. We're going to get some impetus to just push it on up through and break higher. Now, again, remember, unlike the S&P, the NASDAQ, which peaked back on July the 8th, then dropped down quite low and has never gotten back up to challenge that prior high back in July. So the, the NASDAQ hasn't done what the S&P has done. So again, watching closely, this is the chart that we've mainly been trading. This is what I've been trading on over the last many weeks the NASDAQ, because the candles, the volume, it just showed me more. And I talked about this as we were going through it. You guys were doing your practice trades. I was doing several real trades here and just talking about what we were seeing, what we were doing, going long, going short. 
and then things started getting sloppy. So again, when things are sloppy, we keep our powder dry. We wait for the markets to tell us. And of course, we've gotten out of the crappy summertime trading zone now, so I'm hoping for some really good charts to help us chart our way into the fall winter trading zone. What's up with the NASDAQ? I'm thinking that we might go short by the end of the week. And I tell you what I'd like to see on Wednesday or Thursday, I'd like to see some up movement where we get a bit of a wick on top of this. See where this happened before, back on the week July 1? We had, uh, we, you know, we had a sort of an interim high here. This was a green doji, not my, not a successful end to an up move typically. A lot of volume there and then a red down move. And see how it just sort of died? In fact, it didn't just sort of die, it did die. Then we had things try to move up again, rotate over with a red doji with high volume, died again. So again, not, and, and check out this one if we go back a little further. We didn't have any volume to back up this at all, but again, three moves up and then a doji and then it took off again or really a spinning top. So uh, I want to see some signs that really make me feel good about the interim high that we see here with, and again, when we talk about volume, you see this is red. That means our market simply this week, beginning the 16th of September, the market opened, the candle opened lower than the prior close. That's why it's red. Uh, that's all that means. It doesn't mean that it was negative volume. But we do see where things tried to find a peak and sort of died there. That's good with that kind of volume going into a red candle. But I don't like trading off just red down candles. I want a spinning top. So maybe we'll get that for the weeks out. We'll see. Again, not down much. Down nice in the morning if we go down to the bottom of the chart here on the half day. And then recovered a little bit in the afternoon. So we will keep an eye on 20-year bonds. Remember, the inverse for TLT is TBF, Tango Bravo, Foxtrot. It's the pro shares 20-year short, 20-year uh, U.S. government bond short. You can see as bonds have been going down, this has been going up this week. So again, it is an inverse. It is set up and managed to percentage for percentage mirror the underlying asset, which in this case is TLT, TBF, single inverse. Now, we have great trainings at the website. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube. One of the most popular trainings you're going to find on inverse funds. It's called Inverse Funds, How to Make Money When Markets Crash. I think I'll just stick that at the end of today's video again for you. Because again, we might have an opportunity to practice trade that at the end of the week. It's the kind of thing you need to practice. Because remember, there are higher fees on inverse funds. You can magnify your losses. So again, practice trading it is a great way to get used to it. See if it's the kind of thing you like or if you just want to stay away. And again, if you know one of our ETFs goes down, you just finish your trade, let it go down, jump back in when it goes up. Again, you don't have to be in a rush to trade, my friends. The, the number one rule of trading Make money. Number two of trading, make money. Number, well, you know, I'm getting that backwards, aren't I? Number rule, don't lose money. Number two, don't lose money. Number three, make money. But you make money, again, when it counts. If you lose money, lose money, lose money, and you take your nest egg from a million dollars down to half a million dollars, it is so hard to recover. That is, again, why we practice trade relentlessly to learn what we're doing. We're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to learn with us. We're not giving market advice. You don't pay us for that, and we do not deliver that. We want you to practice trade with us and learn by doing. Let's jump into gold. Gold is up again, my friends. Look at this. Gold has just been rocketing up since last Thursday. We saw it move up starting on my birthday, the 11th of September. Moved up, and it really sort of hit its high there on Friday the 13th. 
then moved down for a few days, then starting on Thursday morning of last week, it has just relentlessly climbed, 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 and gold again. We had beautiful volume last week. This week may be, may be building to the same volume as we go into Wednesday, then Thursday and Friday, but gold hammering up looks beautiful. Wish it would have given us some really good clues on doing that. We kept having dojis thrown in there on us during those weeks uh, as things, you know, again, tried to start taking off and then dying, and then a spinning top and then dying, and then up three weeks and then dying, and now going into the third week up. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Where is Bitcoin? Well, we have looked at the 24-hour day Bitcoin. Here we are looking at the Bitcoin ETF. You know, after the big, big down week back there at the beginning of August, that was the week beginning the 5th, just Bitcoin got crushed. Three spinning tops, then another down week, September the 3rd, then another spinning top. Then last week, the 16th, beginning Monday the 16th, we had a nice green up candle this week building up 1.45% for the day. You can see where Bitcoin really popped up last Thursday and then sort of down and then tracking back up. We look at the high last week on Bitcoin, which was 72.30. This week, 72.86. So we are moving higher with a bigger candle. We'll see what happens with volume so far. Not a lot of volume on that weekly chart. We'll see where things continue to trek this week. Is Bitcoin going to keep building? Or again, is the pale, the overhang of this 5th of August week going to keep it from moving above that point? Is that going to be some kind of barrier? And are we going to get any volume to really make us feel good about jumping in. That is where we are, folks. Thank you so much for being with us. Always love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.